Good evening. In this video, I'm going to talk about my latest purchase for my uh, brewery. Uh, I bought myself a reverse osmosis water system. Why, you might ask? Well, I asked myself that same question. Um, you can buy water uh, from water suppliers and in the grocery stores for between 30 and 60 cents a gallon, depending on where you go. Um, and it's RO water. Get it pretty fast. But the thing about that is you got to go out to get it. And for what I paid for my RO system, after 10 or 15 brews, it will have paid for itself. Um, I bought it from a company called Costway.com. Um, I looked on Amazon. There were systems ranging in price from uh, $90 to $100 on up to a couple hundred dollars or more. And the system I got is a a simple system. It's a five-stage system. Uh, it has a booster pump on it and it's rated at 50 gallons a day. Now I found this system on Amazon.com and from this company called Costway. Well I decided to look on Costway's website and see if they had the system advertised there and believe it or not they had it for 10 bucks less than Amazon with free shipping also so I paid 85 bucks for the system now this was before Christmas 2017 I bought it in uh, mid-December and got it here and I installed it between uh, December and between Christmas and New Year's uh, I'll go through and show you the system how I've got it installed and set up and explain it a little bit in a little bit here now um, when I look today for the same system, they've raised the price. And they actually have two systems on here, and they look absolutely identical. One of them they're selling now for $97, and the other one they're selling for $112. Honestly, I can't tell the difference. Uh, they look like the same system, except one of the um, filter housings is clear. Well, I've got a whole house filter in front of my system, so I can see the clear filter anyway. But um, anyway, I'll go through what it looks like and uh, what each stage does uh, with my rudimentary knowledge. Um, what RO Water does give you though for brewing is that it allows you to set up your water profile very specifically. Now, what that means is you can add specific minerals that give you maltiness, uh, other minerals and additives that can give you uh, more hop flavoring uh, and draw out more from your hops. Um, there's really a lot of different things you can do. Uh, you can make historical beers based on what we think specific water pro profiles are in specific locations. Um, now you got to do that with a grain of salt because um, if you get Dublin water, um, Dublin municipal water might be different than what uh, they use to make uh, beer in Dublin. Uh, whatever Guinness when Guinness is making beer you can bet they filter their water and they do all kinds of chemical changes to make that water exactly the same for every beer because water can change based on the time of year uh, where it's coming from rains uh, rivers whatever so you gotta kinda watch what you're doing there but it does allow you to manufacture your own water profile and as you get more and more involved in brewing, you're probably going to want to mess around with that a little bit. So I bought an RO system and it'll let me play around with that a little bit more than I can using my tap water. So let's go see what I've got. Well here's my system. Now if you look at the bottom, it's got the five individual filters and then up on a shelf above it is a storage tank. Now if you look at the different filters, in the case of this system I bought, they're all labeled as to what they're for. Now I'm going to point out each filter and tell you a little bit what it is. And if you'll notice there's also on this system a booster pump that increases the pressure through the RO membrane and makes things work a lot faster. Now this system is rated at uh, 50 gallons a day, which means it can produce RO water at a rate of approximately two gallons an hour. Um, at least that's the membrane. Uh, 
Uh, I think I can go a little faster because of that pump. Now, I set this system up and purchased it because I wanted it in my brewery. Um, but I've also attached it to two refrigerators that have ice and water dispensers in them. And I've got a line that I can get water down in my brewery uh, just for water and for testing purposes. But let me real quick go through the five stages here. Now, I'm not totally clear on exactly what each stage is um, made out of, but as each stage gets past, it gets successively finer as to what it filters out or the type of stuff that it filters out. The first stage um, takes out uh, solids such as rust and particles and uh, bigger stuff. The second stage, stage B, um, takes out organic matter, um, some residual chlorine and different colors and or odors. Uh, the CTO stage takes out some more organic compounds, particulates, rust, uh, and even more chlorine, and some smells. The D stage, which is the bottom one up here, that's the RO filter itself, the membrane, and that is the super fine filter that takes out everything else. Now that works um, by pushing water through the membrane and what water it can't push through the membrane is exhausted and goes down the drain. And it takes approximate four to one ratio to make RO water. So five gallons of water in, one gallon of RO water out. So this is not something you would want to use for your whole house water system. And it's pretty slow. The final stage up here, stage E, is a carbon drinking water filter. Again, it's just a final stage. It cleans up the RO water coming out and uh, supposedly makes it taste a little better, that T33 uh, filter. Um, it really does taste good. Now, up on top there, as I mentioned, I've got a storage tank. Now, since this makes only 50 gallons a day at a rate of about uh, two gallons an hour, um, if you uh, drain it, uh, well, if you didn't have a storage tank up there, um, you'd be lucky to get a cup of water a minute out of it. So you'd be waiting at your faucet forever to get RO water to come out. So what they do is the RO water comes through the membrane here and it goes out the membrane and it splits. There's a splitter there by the, um, the, carb, the final carbon filter right there. And one half of the splitter goes up to the storage tank and it's just pressurizes, it's the pressure of the water, fills the storage tank, and it just sits there and waiting. And what happens is that pressure um, comes back out of the tank and back down through the filter and out to your faucets or wherever your RO is going. Now in my case, I've got it going out into four separate lines. Um, now I'll kind of trace the lines here and uh, show you what I'm talking about. All right. Now one thing, another thing about this system is when it came, it was essentially assembled. Um, the only thing that wasn't uh, put together on it was these cases on the bottom here were um, in a separate box with the filters, the various filters, um, but all these hoses were connected up to the connection points. Um, the booster pump was attached and hoses connected. It was pretty much t uh, assembled. Now, they do have all the outlets that you had to put stuff in on this particular machine uh, labeled. So if you look, this one says pure water outlet. Um, over here, uh, that says to storage tank. Uh, there's another one down here that says wastewater. And then, um, this out this one here by the copper pipe that's my water flow going in and I don't know what happened to the little uh, label that was on it but that's my input water so water goes in here goes through this filter here out the top in the back over there you can kind of see the hose back there then it comes through this filter comes out the front of this filter works its way to the front of this filter comes out the back of that filter and it's too dark back there to see and then it goes up it goes up through some electronics and valves and the pump here 
goes through the pump and from the pump it goes into the membrane it comes out the membrane on this end and one of those outputs is the wastewater and the other output is the RO water which then makes its way up to where it's split off to the tank and the carbon filter then it comes out the carbon filter and out to my faucets I've got it split up here on the output and you'll notice I got a valve there and that's so I can shut off all the outputs if I need to do some work on them and it's really split four different ways I've got uh, a total of three Y connectors so it goes from one to two and from two to three uh, or one to uh, one output to two different Y's and each of those Y's has two outputs now the one that's in the shape of a T as opposed to a Y I mean, in and out uh, one side of them just goes to another valve here and I've just got a hose hanging down that I can do testing with it and the other side goes over to my brewery and it goes along the wall to my brewery I'm going to take you over to the brewery and show you what I've done over there okay over here in the brewery I've got the RO coming down from where I have run the pipe and I've got a valve here now with this valve I can just flip the valve and there's our water you see it comes out at a fairly decent clip uh, since I've got some in the storage tank Turn that off. now what I've done is I've got the lid here for my hot liquor tank but I can take this lid and this lid's got a float in it and I hook this end up to my water there and it'll put water through the float mechanism until this float goes up then it'll shut the valve off so what I can do is just set this up on my hot liquor tank and let it run now it'll run at the uh, speed that the RO is going to come out natively without it being in the storage tank once it empties the storage tank it's just going to come out really really slow and again uh, about two gallons an hour is what they rate it at so it'll take I know that's a 13 gallon keg it's going to take five hours six hours or more to uh, fill that keg up but with the float system I'll have RO water I can start making it in the morning it'll be done by noon or in the evening it'll be done by the time I go to bed come down and turn it off so I'm all set okay well the whole point of RO as I said before is to get all of the um, residual solids out of your water and strip it clean of any minerals and contaminants so we can measure that by using what's called a TDS meter now this is a TDS meter I bought on Amazon uh, when I bought a pH meter this says it's a TA TDS 3 now that checks the total dissolved solids and it'll also check the temperature of the water so let's do an experiment and I'm going to take a sample of RO water and another sample uh, comprised of tap water and let's compare the two and see where they rate now keep in mind my RO system has only been installed for two days so I'm not sure it's fully burned in and uh, there might still be some residual stuff in the filters uh, maybe something as the tank the storage tanks cleaning out uh, there could be stuff left there but they do say it may take a week or so for it to balance out and get to the point where it's uh, at optimal working order but anyway in two days let's see where it's at all right okay I got two taster cups here uh, let me see the orange one on the right is the Omaha Beer Fest cup and the blue one on the left is from the Nebraska Great Nebraska Beer Fest this year um, what I'm gonna do is take samples okay I'll let the water run for a minute on both of these systems to clean out the hose That's the pipe I've actually already done this a little bit ago so I don't have to run it that long um, so the RO water I'm going to put in the blue cup the tap water 
I'm gonna put in the orange cup. Okay, they're both turned off. There we are. So, let's turn these sideways so we can read them. I'm gonna try getting down here at cup level. And maybe zoom in and we'll take some readings. Okay. All right. Okay, here's my TDS meter. And you notice right now, it says zero. Let's put it in the tap water. Oop, had a little bit too much in there. Mm -hmm. Now I got rid of some tap water. Okay, well, let's add a little more. Okay. And let's see what the tap water looks like. Okay, give it a second to get into focus. Uh, then focus. Let's do that just a little more. Okay, right now that is reading 280. I'm sorry if you can't see it very well. Let's see if I can get down a little better here. I think. Okay, it's up to 286. Now they say to leave this for about a minute. I hate to leave it that long, it's taking a while. It's gonna end up right at around uh, 300 when it's done. I know that because I tested this before. It's gonna slowly climb and when it hits 290, I'll stop. Uh, 291. I'm hoping you can read it. I'm looking at the small screen of this camera and I'm not sure it's totally in focus. But that's tap water. Let's say we'll give it 291 for right now. Okay, I'm going to shake this off. So it's back to zero. Okay, let's put it in the RO water. And again, I think I might have a little bit too much in that one too. Okay. Well, in the RO water now, it's starting out at 29. So it went from 200 particles per million down to 29. Now it's 28. We'll let this sample sit for a little bit. Um, I did test this a little bit ago. It's going to end up somewhere in the uh, 25, 26 range, I believe. Is it 27? And anyway, we're going to call that good enough for now. 27. Well, there you have it. Uh, did a test. Um, RO definitely cleans up your water. No doubt about it. I said, I've still got this thing in uh, water here. It's been sitting there for about two minutes now. It's down to 26. So um, that's pretty good for a first run at the tester and um, for the system only being in place for a couple days uh, I expect that when it's fully burned in it should get me down in the 5 to 10 particle range uh, so that's it I hope you enjoyed the video um, take care cheers it sure tastes good